So, welcome into Astrobodan. Oh, been having some great stuff going on lately. Well, since the summer, really. Uh, yeah, I needed like a pet project to take me through the summer and possibly also autumn, winter onwards in case we had bad weather. Yeah, and we had some horrible weather. Yeah, awesome. So, anyway, so I've been busy anyway. Uh, it's more like a DIY project. Well, it's like a DME project. Yeah, well, uh, at least for these this series, I'm going to like uh, allow you guys to be like my nosy neighbor who just happens to walk by the garage door or peek over the fence and I'll just explain what's going on and what I'm doing and and yeah a little bit and this and that and then um, not gonna go super deep into details if I don't have to we'll see what I get away with and uh, also I'm not gonna share source code and, and circuit diagrams and that sort of stuff at least not until I know that things are working, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it would be uh, shameful to spread things then. But anyway, yeah, so let's just uh, take a look at what's been going on, yeah. Now, amateur astronomy is a material sport, like most of it. And uh, uh, now, it's not about it's got the, the biggest telescope or the sturdiest mount or the, the coolest camera. No, it's not, Balti. It's not, no. Although everyone wants that. Yes, okay, come here. Okay, here we go. Balti joins us here. Okay, yep, well, sit still. Yes, yeah, so it's not about it's got all that. Everyone wants it though. I mean, except some people who argue that, well, the hobby should be enjoyed under the night sky with the unaided eye. Yes, isn't that right, Balti? I mean, you, en you enjoy it all the time. Yeah, although the moon is a, is a, is a nuisance, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I always imagine myself being a, like a telescope kind of guy. Like, I first, when I was young, I thought I was going to have like a home observatory with a massive SCT. Yes. Um, then I realized I needed more telescopes to image a uh, vast variety of things. So, there's going to be many telescopes. And for some reason, uh, I ended up being a mount kind of guy. Yes, that's right. You know that, Belty. I got like a small star tracker, I got a small like a travel equatorial mount, and I got two larger like that type of German equatorial mount, yeah. And it's a bit to fill with and nothing is perfect, you have to troubleshoot and work on them, so yeah. Um, don't know how that happened, but um, so what I started to ask myself is uh, what do I want from a mount then, if these aren't good enough, yeah? What do I want? Um, so I'm an engineer, and I started to um, uh, have an eye towards direct drive mounts. Yeah, I mean they just feel like an amazing uh, engineering achievement, and and with great potential. But they also seem to be a bit for larger observatories, and and um, yeah, well at least for larger wallets. Yeah. So what I, my idea here was, could I build one? Yeah, and if I could, I mean, what challenges would I meet, and and uh, uh, how do I get around them, and what compromises do I need to do to minimize complexity and and uh, and, uh, and cost? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so building a mount then. Yeah. Um, let's just start this project with a list. Yeah, a list of things that we need to think about if we're going to do this project. Yeah. So, let's move. Yeah. Uh, so, direct drive mounts, it needs a motor. Well, it needs two. It will be a rubbish direct drive mount unless it has a motor. Okay then, motors, yes. So, I was first going to talk about DC motors and stepping motors and, and other type of motors, yes, to see what why we're using which one but I'm not going to do that we are going straight into it 
we are going to use a BL DC motor, brushless DC motor. Yes, yeah, they come in all varieties of applications that we can find and repurpose for our purpose. Yeah. So the one that I've been having in mind is the uh, uh, hub motor that you can find in like any electrical scooter. You know the ones that's littering the streets, and if you don't trip over them, you have someone does and see where they're going, uh, running over your feet. That's uh, uh, quite a hassle, really. So we can just nick one of them, yeah. Well, no, we're not. But anyway, so <coughs> I've been having my eyes on this. Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, if I was in any YouTuber that I was well, setting out to be here, I was going to film myself breaking my neck on that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's not going to happen. Unless you say that I don't want to um, uh, burden the healthcare system with my broken limbs uh, during these times. So, no, it's been taken pieces already. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm going to look at that in a minute, but it's a 350 watt. BLDC motor, three phase. F face. Yeah. Now, a uh, BLDC motor, unlike the DC motor, requires quite a bit of control logic to run it. Yeah. So we need a control circuit. Control circuits. Yes. And I can buy them. Um, and <clears throat> there is one already in the uh, in the other board that I just got here. Yeah, so uh, one thought here was to repurpose that, <clears throat> but we'll be, let's just step ahead here, we'll be building our own, yeah, 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 buying is for, is for uh, um, wusses, yes, yeah, that's it, so, <clears throat> order. It also needs to be configured in a way. You have Equatorial and Altas, that's the two main configurations. Here we have one type of mount. Uh, this is the Equatorial mount, yeah. Uh, on this mount, you have your two main axes. You have your right ascension, uh, which is used for main slowing. And then you have your declination here. And with these two, you can point anywhere in the sky yeah now you also have the uh, alt s you have your azimuth which is used with these two knobs and you have um altitude to control this and on this mount you only use them for polar line yeah so and i realized i not don't really have any um out pure alt s mounts except Maybe this little guy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't mess with the little guy, yeah. So anyway, here we have camera ball head, or use the camera, you turn it in asthma and in altitude. Yeah. Anyway. And they do come in larger versions, yeah. They do. And uh, I'm an equatorial kind of guy. Yeah, EQ mount. It needs to be computerized. All right, so computers control intelligence. Yes, we need something intelligent to uh, run the mount, which, well, excludes me, so I'll have to figure out something else. And I am going to use a microprocessor. Yes, specifically one that I've been using before. And it's a teensy, yeah, a little 32 bit microcontroller. Um, it's got everything I need to control the motors, to read sensors, yeah, so that's what we're going to use. Yeah, we're also going to need a regular computer, yes, <clears throat> to run like a higher level programs such as PhD2, maybe some planetarium software, maybe our own in, uh, control software. And to do that, I'm going to use something that I'm used to, and it's the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, not trying to do any product placing here, it's just uh, I'm giving you what I'm using. Um, 
So the Raspberry Pi, using that for all my mounts, really, to run guiding and, and planetarium software and, and, and all that. Yeah. So I'm going to use that one to interface myself with this, which then controls the mount. Yeah, super simple. Yeah, I'm sure we can make that super complicated, but yeah, from start is quite a simple idea anyway. Yeah, I was in the beginning really keen on trying to use a mobile phone as the main controller. Yeah, I mean, it's got everything. You have like most, pretty much the processing power you want. You have uh, like a, a Wi Fi, Bluetooth, serial port. You have a GPS for time and location. You have a compass and, and accelerometers for basic pointing that you could use for, say, uh, polar alignment. It's got everything. Yeah. It's got everything, but I, I'm not really um, that much into app programming yet, so I'm not going to let the project rest on that. So I will, might look into that later, but for now I'm going to do with what I'm somewhat comfortable with. Yes, that's it. Over to me. Well, for, for me, I think I would like my mount to be able to do handle the guiding, to uh, handle the imaging. Uh, maybe also have a planetarium software or application so that it can find its way around the sky on its own. Uh, I would like it to um, um, uh, what else? Yeah, maybe have remote access so it can sit inside and, and use it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a few things there. I'm sure we're going to compromise on them as well. Uh, what else? Encoder. Now Encoder is a piece of hardware that tells the mount controller where, how the uh, main axis are rotate are are uh, uh, rotated. Yeah. And usually all mounts have an encoder, simple encoder on the back of the motor. And basically, it's a usually a slotted disc with an optical reading fork that can see which way the mount, the motor is rotating and maybe even which speed is rotating. Yeah. And then that's all geared down to one side zero rate of about 15.04 something arc seconds per second. Very, very slow. Yes, but the motor can actually run at a comfortable, measurable speed. Yeah, that's quite nice then. But it doesn't actually tell you how the axle is situated. Yeah, just how the motor is driving the axle. Yes. Uh, for a direct drive mount, though, you need you don't have any gearing. So you need to measure the movement of the main axis itself. That requires an encoder with quite high resolution. Yeah. So what I wonder is how high resolution? I mean, the encoders that you, the professional direct drive mounts you can find have, they are like sub arc seconds. And that is, if I were to buy that, it was going to be the, the, the biggest expense on the on the whole project yeah and uh, I want to see how I can compromise on this yeah how high resolution do I actually need can I um, uh, get it working anyway in some way with a lower resolution and how low can I go to so it's a bit of work that can I make my own encoder yeah this project can go deep all right so to sum it up the project here then uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the legs from this. I'm going to get some circuit board, control boards made up for it. To make it run, sorry about the manual way, like this, star tracker. So, BADC motor on a mount, fixture, whatever, control boards for it, and uh, get a ball head uh, Fit it on it so I can stick a camera or a small telescope or something on it, and then we'll, we'll be Star Trek. Yeah, should be some hard, shouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, but that's the next episode. So, till then, let the dark side be with you.